Well, good evening. We'd like to welcome you to the Thankful Thursday Bible Study here at Grant Chapel, African Methodist Episcopal Church. We pray that your day has been well and that God will make your evening even better after having shared with us in this, our evening Bible study. Uh, today we want to look in on our lesson. <clears throat> we thank God for our weekly uh, Bible study literature that is sponsored by our denomination's uh, production department. And so today we look in on lesson nine of our Sunday school literature uh, that discusses the Lord and how God loves justice. Over the past few weeks and months, we have been studying uh, the love of justice and the prophets. And so today we have an opportunity to consider Isaiah chapter 61 verses 8 through 11 and Isaiah chapter 62 verses 2 through 4. That becomes our place in study for tonight. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 8 through 11 and chapter 62 verse 2 through 4. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for this study. Thank you, God, for your word. And we pray now that you will open understanding for us through your word and bless us as we gather in distance and gather in fellowship of your sacred word. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. The word is for us today. Continue the line of study uh, on the idea and the practice of justice and how much of a role justice plays in the life of God's people and the believers in times past and in our modern day. <clears throat> One of the pillars of the good news of salvation is the fact that the Lord loves justice. And so tonight's lesson allows us to center around the study of justice and how much God loves it. The key verse for tonight's study is Isaiah chapter 61, verse 8. And this is how it reads from the New Revised Standard Version. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. That's Isaiah 61, 8. I would like to begin tonight by saying that the scripture is very in intensely uh, accurate when it comes to God's favor on those who do justice. Also, we see in this lesson tonight how God feels about the unjust or injustice. And so God's position is very clear without a doubt. But the passage that we look at tonight goes a little bit further. It reinforces the fact of what God does for those who live a just life. There are three things that the lesson shares. It says, first, God will reward people who stand for justice. Second, God, when he punishes a nation for their injustice, that punishment lasts only for a set time. And third, uh, there is a strong link between the practice of justice and economic prosperity in a nation. And how befitting this lesson is for us tonight as we are living in some challenging economic times. I would for a few moments that you would allow us to walk through the verses and unpack these verses so that we will gain the meaning of what uh, the writer is saying uh, concerning God's people that live justly. Let's look here particularly to verse 9 of Isaiah 61. The writer says that their descendants, the people who are just, their descendants shall be known. What he's saying is their descendants shall be renowned and shall have favor. The descendants of all nations. Basically, he's talking about the Gentiles and that their offspring would also be blessed. As he continues in verse 9, the writer tells us that this, this idea of God's blessing is for all people whom are blessed of the Lord. This alludes to the blessing that God was talking about for Abraham and his seed. Um, in the 41st chapter of Isaiah, verse 8, the Bible says that the descendants of Abraham would be blessed. You know, it's in that text also that God counts Abraham as his friend. And so certainly as Abraham is a friend of God, those of us who do justice are also counted as friends of God. The writer of this text, as Isaiah puts it, he points out very clearly that we should consider the implications of both modern times and ancient times. As we look at verse 10, he talks about the blessing of rejoicing. 
that will befall those who live justly. And he says they will rejoice and they will be clothed with garments of salvation. This is key for us. A garment of salvation and a robe of righteousness. God makes clear that he will glorify the status and the conditions of those who live justly. And so this, this writer, as he unpacks Isaiah 61, he begins to continue to show us the blessedness that God will pour on his people who walk in justice. The lesson goes on to unpack for us that they will, in verse 11, God gives us his commission and his great coming of salvation. He tells us in no uncertain terms that it will be as a garden that causes us to flourish. So I just want to say a few words about justice as this author and this writer of our text unpacks it. When we consider the economic implications that are practiced in justice, we must also keep in mind that as we desire our political officials, our government officials to do justice, then we also as believers must live a life that leans to a philosophy and a practice of justice. I was thinking and I put a few notes um, that not only leaders but fellowship and the constituency must do their part to bring justice to an otherwise inequitable and unjust process of distribution. Think about it. When we talk about Census 2020, not only has government sent us a process of finding out what the population is in our community, but they also expect us to do our part. Now, to not practice and fill out your census form is one form of injustice. Because if we don't do our part, then we dismiss thousands, if not millions, of federal dollars that could come into our community. So therefore, we have a duty, a bounden duty, to be uh, just citizens and to do our part. I would also say to you that in the sacred community, leadership in the church must embrace uh, the priesthood of all believers. This is the idea that all of us bring something that is valuable to the table to advance the kingdom of God. So if the leadership in the church is going to do justice, we must share, share. That must be a table of common understanding, a table where we can come and reason together about the things that will not only grow the church, but will grow the community around the church where we are planted. So we have a bounden duty. I think the scripture is still true that we learn in fact that God is in character and in all essence a God of justice. God is a just God and God is also a jealous God. And so therefore, if a nation is to be blessed of God, it must be a nation that lives and strives for justice. This lesson tonight also gives us an opportunity not only to see and to revisit the understanding of what God's wrath will be upon the unjust, and if you note the lessons that we've studied about justice prior to, we have learned that God has an everlasting covenant that he has made with his people. In like manner, there is an everlasting punishment for those who live unjustly. And so in the key verse, he says, I hate robbery and I hate wrongdoing. We learned a few weeks ago in our study that there are consequences to doing injustice. And so God wants us to know while there is a consequence for injustice, there is also a blessing of everlasting uh, joy, of everlasting peace, of everlasting beauty, of everlasting uh, fellowship for those who do justice. And so in these closing verses, in ver chapter 62, particularly starting at verse 2, this is what God says as he sheds his vindication and his righteousness upon his people. He says they will be called by a new name, and the Lord is the one that will give it to them, those who live justly. Then he says, you shall be crowned with beauty, and you shall be crowned with a royal diadem. Now, he's not saying that we shall get the crown, i.e., but he's saying we shall be, we shall, we shall be ha like a crown in hand. We shall have a royal diadem placed about us. These terms are symbolic for the blessings that God would impart to his people. 
In the closing verse, the writer talks about we will no longer, in closing verse 4 of chapter 62, we will no longer be termed forsaken. We will no longer be termed desolate. But God has a blessed, pleasant place, a pasture of growth that will belong to us, to those who live justly. Psalm 84 verse 11 says, No good thing will God withhold from them who walk upright, who do justly, and who love him. So the divine desire of God is to see us practice a life of justice and share a life of justice with others. I would remind you of 2 Chronicles 7, 14, that is a direct correlation to the idea of God's beneficial justice. If my people, we hear that verse so often, if my people would do this, this, and this, Seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then here's the justice God provides in reward. Then will I hear from heaven, and I will heal their land. God is saying to us, justice provides a righteous life after life. It provides a righteous afterlife. For if we live justly here, then our reward is just. For if we live unto injustice or injustice here, our life will be unto uh, punishment. So the writer gives us several understandings of it. To this week, as we live and breathe, I wish you would consider Psalm 23 as a closing devotion to this lesson. It impresses upon us as God's people that God protects us and God makes provision for us when we live righteously. Now, justice must have its perfect place. And we've heard it said all through our lives, until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Our hope is that in days ahead, justice will have a chance. So I pray in your home, in your community, and God help for our government that justice will have a chance. And so it is our prayer. Dear God, we thank you for your protection and provision. It is our prayer that your justice will be the order of the day and that we will in turn become visionary conduits for your justice. Bless us now and bless us indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray that on next week you will join us as we celebrate this lesson entitled A Vision of Restoration from Zechariah, Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 14 through 20. A vision of restoration. Join us, and we look forward to sharing. Amen.